Hi, my name is Austin from Chainsafe and I'm going to be giving a basic overview of Ethermint and then walking through how to deploy and interact with Solidity contracts on your own Ethermint zone. So what is Ethermint? Ethermint is basically a Cosmos SDK module which allows for Ethereum state transitions including Solidity smart contracting on Tendermint Core. This also includes a Web3 API layer which allows you to interact with uh, Ethereum state using existing dev tooling. Before I get more in depth into Ethermint, I'm just going to give a basic overview of Tendermint and Cosmos SDK and explain how they fit. Basically, Tendermint is the replicated state machine um, of the Ethermint node. It provides proof of state consensus uh, with five second block times when used with Cosmos SDK and instant block finality, as well as uh, peer to peer networking. Next is Cosmos SDK. Cosmos SDK is the application framework which allows for the EVM module logic to be plugged into Ethermint or any other application. Um, Cosmos SDK allows for the creation of application specific blockchains which basically allows you to easily define the state transition logic and use existing modules. Um, the main point for this is the modularity allows for the EVM module to interact with existing and new Cosmos SDK modules. Here is an image I found online to illustrate the connection between Tendermint and Cosmos. Uh, so Tendermint is the green consensus and networking layers, uh, where Cosmos SDK is the application layer at the top with plugins that are basically modules, uh, and any one of those could, could be the EVM module. And they interact with each other through the ABCI, which is Application Blockchain Interface. So why would you use Ethermint? First, it gives you the ability to use existing smart contracts and tooling and allows you to transition slowly into native code or any other VM execution and doesn't require you to switch all at once. Next, it's on top of Tendermint, which is a battle-tested POS system um, and has all the existing EVM state transition logic that people are used to. Um, E2 state execution, which it comes in phase two, is at least a year away. Finally, with Ethermint comes fast and instant block finality on top of Tendermint, um, which as compared to Ethereum's 15 second block time and probabilistic finality, this is a great thing for being able to process transactions faster and have, and have those blocks finalized instead of uh, waiting for uh, you know, an arbitrary amount of blocks to pass. So for this next part, I'm just going to walk through starting up an Ethermint node, and then I'm going to follow that up with uh, deploying a, a simple uh, Solidity smart contract and then interacting with it through Web3. Uh, first thing you want to do is clone the Chainsafe Ethermint repo. And then once that's done, you're just going to want to CD into it. Uh, first thing you want to do is uh, install the binaries. Uh, if you don't have GoBin set up correctly to use this, uh, these binaries in your GoPath, um, you can just run make build and then use them inside of the build directory. Um, but we're just going to use the installed versions for this. Uh, the next part is uh, initializing the moniker and chain ID. So you're going to want to run emit d init doesn't really matter what you call the, what, what the moniker is. And then uh, the chain ID, it uh, doesn't really matter what it is. It, the only thing is it has to be an integer because coming from Ethereum, you need an integer chain ID to be able to uh, sign transactions and get the sender address uh, with the chain ID. So then for this next part, I'm just going to set up some config. I'm just going to copy and paste some config commands and then explain what they do. Um, this sets the default chain ID for the CLI. Um, which is set up here. And then uh, this next part uh, sets the output to JSON, indents it, and then sets trust node to true so that the CLI process can trust the daemon. Um, the next part is setting up the keys. So the first key we're going to set up is, um, is just basically a key to sign the Genesis transaction. This is a part, this is a part of the uh, workflow that's probably going to change within the next week or so. Um, but for now, it is required to, to have just like a generic Cosmos key to sign the Genesis transaction. So that's what we're setting up here. Just enter in a password. Uh, the next part is adding a uh, Ethermint key. Um, 
doesn't really matter what you call it again. Um, and then this is just going to be used to be able to uh, sign and send transactions uh, through the EVM. Uh, so the next part is allocating these key, uh, the, the accounts that these keys refer to. Um, so these are just basically allocating photons and stakes just to be able to start up the chain and interact with it. Um, this part here just basically prints out the address, the dash A, and these addresses uh, map to a Cosmos address. So it's just basically um, sending coins to these accounts for in Genesis. Uh, the next part is uh, setting up the Genesis transaction. So I'm just going to use the GenTX module and sign it with the Genesis key. And then once that's created, you're just going to want to uh, collect that Genesis transaction. And then just to make sure that everything went correctly, you just run emit d validate Genesis. And then it should say it is a valid Genesis file. So then from here, what you're just going to want to do is run emit d start, and then it'll start the node. Um, one thing to note about this is if you want to use it with the Web3 API and you want to access past state, you're going to want to add the, uh, the pruning flag. And this will basically mean that uh, past state won't be pruned and you can query past, uh, past state through the Web3 API. Um, so now that, now that that's running, I'm just going to open up the uh, basic Ethermint deploy uh, repository I set up for this video. Uh, you can find it at chain save slash ethermint dash deploy. I'm just going to clone it here. And then first thing you want to do is just run yarn install to get the dependencies. And then while the, and I'll just wait for this to happen real quick. Uh, you only have to run this once if you're not familiar with uh, node applications. And then I'm just gonna open it up just to kind of walk through what's gonna happen. There we go. <clears throat> so first I'm gonna look at the contract we're gonna be deploying. Uh, so it's just a basic counter contract. It has a counter value which starts at zero. You can increment, decrement it, or just get the counter at any point. Um, and basically all the logic for deploying the contract is in here. Um, just to walk through at a very basic high level. First, it compiles it using SoulCJS, which all the logic is in here. Um, first compiles it to get the ABI and, and bytecode, and then it's going to get the account from the node, deploy the contract uh, to the Ethermint zone. It's going to get the contract counter, which is through the uh, get counter method. Um, it's going to send an add transaction, so it's basically going to interact with that contract um, to increment the counter, and then it's going to get that counter again just to show that it did increment it. So before this starts, uh, I'm just going to go back to this documentation just to start the server. Um, basically, what you're going to want to do is run emit CLI rest server with the address of the uh, where you want the Web3 API to uh, endpoint to be. Um, we're just going to have it like this just because that's what's set up inside the repo and then use the unlock key. So this basically allows you to use this key to sign transactions through the Web3 API. Uh, so now that the REST server started, I'm just going to run yarn start. So first it's going to compile the code, it's going to get the address, it's going to deploy the contract, it's going to get the counter. Uh, before incrementing, it's going to increment the transact. It's going to increment the counter through a transaction. Uh, that transaction was finalized in block 37, which you can see here. So this is the add uh, transaction, and then this is the transaction to deploy the contract. Um, and then you can see the, the counter was was uh, incremented to one here. Um, so just to uh, just give one final example of this, uh, what I'm going to do is just change up the counter contract. Um, just to show that it compiles and stuff. So I'm just going to start it at four. And then uh, let's say instead of um, add, we're just going to subtract. And I'm not going to change any other documentation, but, and then basically just run 
CR at the start. It's going to compile this new code. Um, it's going to deploy, deploy this new contract. Um, it's going to get the counter value before the uh, transaction, which is four. It's going to call the subtract, and it's going to be finalized in block 50, um, which you can see here. And then the counter post, um, well, I didn't change this to decrement, but um, you can see that I changed the code to, to subtract, and now it's at three. So this is basically just a, uh, an overview of how to deploy contracts and interact with them on Ethermint. Um, I hope to go more in depth at a later time, um, you know, in another video, to go more in depth into like the code and explain what you can do with it and the possibilities of transitioning. Um, but for now, we'll just leave it as this, just to get started with Ethermint.